Today we continue our Awakening Your True Self series with Insight. Hello and welcome to episode 311 of Namaste Yoga. I'm Dr. Melissa West and thank you so much for welcoming me into your home this week as we journey into your innermost home. And today, if you're watching this on the day that it's being released, which I imagine most of you are not because it is Christmas Day for those of you who celebrate Christmas. So Merry Christmas to those of you who celebrate Christmas. It is the day before Christmas Eve here, the day we're filming it. So um, we were just discussing our day before we pressed record. Lots to do. We're going skiing on Christmas Eve on Mount Washington here on the island. We're looking forward to that. So I have a testimonial today from Heidi from SpeakPipe. Merry Christmas, Melissa, and thanks for making this year so much better for me. Have a peaceful week. Bye. So Merry Christmas to you too, Heidi. Thank you so much for sending that message. I love hearing from you. SpeakPipe is a great way to send a message on my website, and I can send you a voice message right back, which is always fun. We love hearing from you wherever you send your message on my website, on Facebook, on YouTube, in our membership community, in iTunes. It's always great to hear from you and about your practice. So thanks to Squeeze Yoga Clothing for my clothes today. Today I'm wearing a bamboo cap sleeve top with the flying heart design, one of my favorite uh, squeeze designs. And I'm wearing capri black leggings with an ohm sign on it. And thanks to Dusky Leaf for my props today. I'm using the brand new to me, rubber mat, and I've got, uh, you're going to need a strap today and blocks today. Uh, members, if you're looking for a practice, a connective tissue practice to do before the class today, I would recommend hamstring rescue. I think that will help you out. And just a little aside, I've been doing the connect, the foot uh, connective tissue practice with the soft squash ball before bed, and that has been helping me a lot to wake up without headaches in the morning. So that's a big, yeah, that's a big plus for me. It's amazing. So we're going to start today with um, some bridge pose to create some ground for opening up the investigation. I keep wanting to say insight. To me, it's about insight, so it's funny. But the word is investigation. But it allows you to uh, create the ground to open up to investigation. And we'll just do a little centering here before we come into bridge pose. So just lie down on your back with your knees bent and your feet flat on the floor. Take a deep breath in through your nose and let it fall out of your mouth. And allow yourself to arrive here now. Feel your whole back body against the ground, feel your feet connecting to the ground, the back of your pelvis, your arms, your rib cage, your upper back, the back of your head. And each time you breathe out, allow yourself to sink into the ground a little more deeply.
And then just take a moment, I think we did this a couple of weeks ago too, but with the hustle and bustle of the season, it's really important to connect with where you are in the world, where your place on the planet, um, on the earth. So connect with where you are on the earth right now. So feel the ground underneath you. So not just your mat, the floor underneath that. And then go underneath that as well. And feel for the ground underneath you. So connect with your place in the earth. So for me today here, it's been another rainy, windy, stormy day here. And where I live on Vancouver Island, um, they call it the rock. And the place where my home is, is um, built on rock as far as I know. Um, yeah, <laughs> when I visualize the space and I ground down, we are, home is built on rock. Excuse me, I need to cough. So visualize the earth underneath you. For me, I live on rock. For you, what is the earth like underneath you? What is your connection to the earth? And then we're going to connect with that earth through your feet. I'm going to get you to place one of your blocks between your knees to feel that stability, more of that stability. So I'm going to imagine my feet connected directly with that rock underneath me. And press into my feet until my pelvis lifts off the ground. So my feet are connected to the stability of the rock underneath me that is the earth that is underneath me where I am on the planet. So for you, it might be more soil, maybe more sand. Depends on where you live, what the earth is like underneath you. And then here, along your psoas, there is an opening that happens in bridge pose that opens up your digestive system that allows you to not only digest food, but to digest your experiences so that you're able to investigate more deeply. And then also there's heart opening that happens here that allows you to um, open your heart to the experiences that are happening as well. So this pose is very, first we create that ground through our connection to the earth so that we're rooted and grounded so that we can digest our experience for investigation and we open our heart to the experiences that are happening in our lives. So we're gonna interlace our fingers and tuck our shoulders underneath us. So here we are in bridge pose, rooted, creating that rooted foundation for investigation, creating that calmness in our digestive systems so that we can digest, digest what's happening and an open heart for whatever is coming our way in our lives. And then untuck your shoulders, lower your pelvis down to the ground. Take your block out from under, uh, between your knees and then hug your knees into your chest to stretch out your low back as a counter pose here. Okay, from here you're going to need your strap. Okay, so you're going to take your strap and place it around your the ball of your right foot and draw your 
right foot straight up. And if you don't have any low back issues, you can extend your left leg out. And we're gonna cross your right leg over until you feel something happening on the back of your right leg and on the outside of your right leg. And then I'm going to get you to actually bend your left knee and tuck your left hip right under so that you can cross your right leg all the way over so you come into a twist here. And here's where what I love about the dusky leaf strap is it's so long. So then you can still use your strap and be in this twist here. And then we're going to come back to the center. So you're going to draw that right leg in and you'll probably have to untuck your hips a little bit. And then we'll just take a moment and feel the difference in your midsection here. So your organs here, your digestive organs, but also your right leg. And then we're going to hook up your left leg. And again, if you have any low back issues, just keep your left leg bent. So I actually meant your right leg bend. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is cross your leg over so you feel not only something happening on the back of your left leg, but also on the outside of your, I'm sorry, I'm cueing the legs wrong today. We're talking about your gesture leg, your left leg. So whole back of your pelvis is on the ground. You wanna feel something happening on the back of your left leg and the outside of your left leg. And if you don't have any low back issues, you can lengthen your right leg out long. It's just gonna give a little bit more grounding here if there's no back issues. And then we're gonna take it into the twist. So you are gonna to have to bend your right knee here just so you can tuck your right hip all the way under and extend your right leg out. So you come into the twist, use the full length of your strap here. Take your arms out into a soft T, look over your left shoulder. So we're stimulating your digestive system here to help to prepare your mental body for investigation. And then we're going to come back. So you'll have to press into your bent right leg again to come onto your back. And we'll just pause there for a moment and feel the effects of that twist on both sides. And then we're going to just allow your body to unravel there for a moment. And then you're going to bend your knees, roll to your right side, and make your way up onto all fours for a cat pose. 
Okay, so for cat pose, you're gonna come onto all fours and we're going to focus on cat pose on moving from your navel center. So exhale and draw your navel up towards the ceiling and then inhale and move your navel towards the ground. Okay, so exhale round and bring your navel up towards the ceiling and then inhale and arch and move your navel towards the, the ground. So this is going to help to ground you in the present moment and you're moving again from your digestive system. So really notice what it feels like to move from your digestive organs. This is actually probably a really good class to do right around the holiday seasons if you celebrate Christmas because you're not uh, in your normal routine of eating, your digestive system might be a little upset. So this will calm it down. And then we're going to do thread the needle. So inhale, take your left arm out to the side. Exhale, take your left hand between your right wrist and your right knee. Lower your left side of your head down to the ground. Tuck your chin. So you're doing another rotation again, which will uh, not only release all the muscles along your spine, through your shoulder, even your neck, but also another good one for digestion to prepare the ground for your mental body to be able to do investigation. Remember about your the, what's happening behind you too. Feel your shins and your legs against the ground. And then inhale. Sorry. Inhale, unwind. Tim's dropping things in the background. <laughs> okay. Inhale, open up. And exhale uh, with your right arm. Your right hand comes between your left wrist and your left knee. Tuck your chin. Rest your right shoulder on the ground. So feel that opening up your the back of your right shoulder. Also, we're just really focusing on creating that rotation through your torso today. Then inhale and you're gonna come on out and we're going to, let's see, come and sit for uh, our meditation. So I'm gonna actually just grab my meditation cushion and I'm gonna sit cross-legged and we're going to do a mudra. Okay, so we're going to do the Pushan Mudra today. And the way it works is in your right hand, you're gonna bring the, the tips of your thumb, your index finger and your middle finger together in your right hand. And then your left hand, you're gonna bring your thumb, your middle finger and your ring finger together. And this Mudra symbolizes the receiving on one hand and then the letting go on the other hand. So it's a great mudra for investigation uh, because with investigation, when uh, things come up again and again and again, it's important to acknowledge them, receive them, 
and investigate them. And then uh, to actually next week, we'll, we'll look a little bit more deeply at letting go of the story. So this is a good mudra for that. Maybe we'll do this mudra two weeks in a row. It's a good idea. I'll try and remember that. <laughs> Okay, so this week we continue. Oh, uh, let me set you up with that. <laughs> so you're going to feel your sit bones, feel your shoulders over your hips and your ears over your shoulders. We sit like this uh, with your eyes closed so you're alert and you can receive the teachings. So this is your opportunity to receive your teachings for this week so you can take them with you and out into your world. Take a deep breath in and let it fall out of your mouth. And this week, as they say, we continue our mindfulness-based yoga series on awakening to your true self with our acronym RAIN. We're the third week in with that. We did, um, the first two weeks, we did recognition and acceptance. And this week, we are focusing on investigation. So through our yoga practice, we can awaken to our true selves. We can discover new ways to approach the challenges of our lives while deepening the wisdom and joy we experience as well. Through our dedicated yoga practice, we can awaken to our best spiritual and human capabilities. Investigation allows us to see deeply. Through our yoga practice, we explore our physical sensations in our body, emotions, our energies, and the thought patterns that surface through our yoga practice. So when we practice yoga, things come up and oftentimes it might be the same emotions, the same energetic experiences, the same uh, physical sensations in our body, the same thought patterns. And when they do keep coming up, it's our call to investigate them. Our physical experience offers the perfect opportunity to bring awareness and loving kindness to what's happening in our body. We can explore the sensations and limitations of our physical experience with kindness and acceptance. So for example, last uh, fall and winter and even, t even still to a lesser degree, when I was experiencing frozen shoulder, it wasn't a time for me to pack in my yoga practice, so I wouldn't say when you experience any physical limitations, it's time for you to pack in your yoga practice. It's time for you to really open up and to investigate and to be curious about those, uh, whether they be strong physical sensations or even limitations. So it's been interesting to me over the last little while going, we had so many winter solstice parties and um, people telling me why they can't practice yoga and I think those are actually uh, for the most part there are reasons there are very interesting reasons to explore your yoga practice in more depth in my opinion in response to our physical practice emotions will also arise they too can be pleasant unpleasant or neutral so uh, through our physical practice, we learn that we tend to hang on to dear life, to that which is pleasant. We contract and we avoid unpleasant emotions. And we disengage or we zone out when the experience is neutral. And this happens, I would say, pretty much across the board. Um, as a teacher, I see this happen often with my students. There's a real grasping and going for experiences that almost entertain us. And then there's a real uh, pulling away from experiences that we don't like. And then there's a tendency to actually just completely disengage, zone out, when the experience is neither... Um, unpleasant or pleasant and our task as yogis is to stay mindful and engaged throughout that is that is the sign of a mature uh, yogi to be able to stay engaged through your entire practice whether it's pleasant unpleasant or neutral I would say to be able to stay engaged in the most boring practice would be <laughs> the sign of a very mature yogi so our practice as yogis is to stay present whatever the 
physical or emotional landscape. Likewise, during our physical yoga practice, thought patterns will surface, and this is really common. They too are a perfect training ground to question the stories we have associated with certain physical experiences. And for each one of us, they will be unique. So what judgments and beliefs arise in response to physical stimulus? So there was a really interesting blog in our membership community recently about a woman who uh, went through the, this whole process about her experience of balancing postures. And it, it was so cool, her unfolding of this, because she... Um, she had real challenge with balancing postures and there used to be a lot of judgment around it around you know why can't I do it and I'm, I'm not re remembering the the whole story exactly but it was there was a lot of judgment and you know I should be better at it by now I've been practicing it and with some investigation she came to the conclusion that you know um, she kind of made this parallel between um, something I had said, I think, about the physical limitations of a, a skeletal body and forward folds that, you know, sometimes there are certain limitations that keep us from being able to do things. So she'd made this, this um, parallel with balancing postures that there might actually be something physically wrong with her that's preventing her from being able to balance, <laughs> which is true. There are often inner air things that happen that prevent people from being able to balance well and so it was really cool to see her actually drop the inner critic and be able to have that insight that she probably had something happening within uh, physically that was preventing her from being able to balance this is like really high level investigation when we can drop that inner critic and come to ourselves with real loving kindness and that level of awareness and insight so there's that you know with that rain if we use recognition acceptance investigation and there is also the next part of it non-identification so that dropping of the story that she's not good at balance so then she came to this whole level of new awareness and so, uh, and she can, you know, go and see your doctor and probably confirm that that's true as well. So we can start to ask ourselves if our stories, our thought patterns are true or if they're a habitual uh, thought pattern or a true reflection of our present moment experience. And this is what investigation allows for us. So reflect on these teachings and what they mean to you in your life now and see what you would like to receive from this class today what is it that you would like to create sustain let go of a rebirth in your life and begin to form an intention for yourself okay so once you formed your intention we're going to do some lunge pose on Janayasana. And I'm going to use this blanket to support my knees. I would encourage you to do the same if you're on a hardwood floor. And actually you're gonna need your blocks as well. So we're gonna do a little bit of sequence of postures here. So I would put your blocks up here. Okay, so take a step forward between the blocks with your left foot. Oh, did you hear that? <laughs> a big crack in my, my sacrum. Okay, now that that's sorted. All right, so you're going to ground down through your front left foot and we're going to do open up your front left hip and we're going to do a rotation here for digestion. So sink down, come upright, and I'm gonna give you two options here. You can take your right hand to the outside of your left knee, or depending, and this one's great because there's not too much compression through your belly, for a little bit more, and this gets more into your shoulders, but it just depends on what you want today. You can bring your palms together at your heart center.
and then you can come back to the center. You, If you have tight hamstrings like me, I would encourage you to roll them up a level and bring your left foot back. Tuck your right toes under, inhale. Exhale, straighten out both legs and you're opening up the backs of your legs. This class is really great for your hamstrings too. Opening up your hamstrings and also very calming for your mind, which in return calms your whole digestive system and creates a great ground. So creates a great ground for investigation. So by opening up your lower body, connecting your lower body to the ground, doing all these calming postures, creating this calm ground for uh, digestion, it creates the physical ground and the space in your mental body to be able to do this investigation. So it just creates the ground. And then inhale and lower down. And take your blocks back down to that lower level. Bring your left foot back and you're going to switch your knees. Okay, so walk your right leg between that space between the blocks. And then sink down through your front right foot. Come upright. And you have two choices here either your left hand to the outside of your right knee here. You can always lift and move your belly out of the way here as well. Or you can take your left elbow to the outside of your right knee and palms come together. And then come back to the center. You're gonna pull the blocks back and up one level. Pull your front foot back. Turn your left toes under, breathe in. Breathe out, straighten out through both legs. Okay, so standing forward, folding triangle. Relax your head. Feel that opening in the backs of your legs. Sink your legs and feet down into the ground. Notice your connection to the earth here. So remember where you are on the planet, on the earth, what the earth is like underneath you here. And then you can walk your back foot in. And you're going to roll up to standing. Okay, from standing we're going to do another pose that's going to prepare us for our piece de resistance is at the very end today. <laughs> and it's like we've been preparing for it all the way from the beginning. So let me put this off to the side. You're going to need your strap again. It may be actually easier to do this using the wall. That may make it more difficult too. I'm not sure. <laughs> but um, it's a balancing pose. So if you 
put your back body to the wall. That will at least help you with the balance and also actually with the symmetry of the pose. So those are the two things. And then it will, but given that, it will make the actual uh, physical sensation of the pose more intense. So if you come away from the wall, what will happen is your, um, your hips will go out of alignment. Sorry. As soon as you step away from the wall, you'll, uh, your hip alignment will go off and then it will make the sensations of the pose easier because you'll be making adjustments elsewhere in your body. So let's try it against the wall. It's called, it's kind of the similar, it's instead of Supta Padangustasana, it's Utita Hasta Padangustasana. So you're doing the same thing you did lying on your back, but now you're doing it standing up. And it's much more challenging standing. Hmm? What's it called? Utita Hasta Padangustasana. So it's hand to big toe pose standing. <laughs> okay. So, and it's a challenging posture. So you're going to use your strap. You're going to place it around your right foot, the ball of your right foot, and you're going to extend your leg out. And this might be easier for you than for me. That's what happens for me when I do that pose. You want to bring your leg parallel to the ground. And then you, I also want you to cross it over your body. Okay, and then you can step it down again. You're gonna step into the strap on your left foot now. Yeah, there's a reason why I don't practice these that often and I probably should practice them more. <laughs> I find them tremendously difficult. Okay, so lining up our back body with the wall, hips, and then you're gonna take your legs straight up as far as is comfortable for you. and then cross it over your body. Okay, and then you can lower that down. <laughs> and we're going to do warrior three. So warrior three, you can also do using the wall. Let's do it using the wall today. You can do it using the wall with your foot against the wall. And this is nice for grounding. Uh, it's, it's, it's a nice grounding piece, not necessarily a great um, balancing piece. So you can come like that. Bring your arms out in front of you. Too far. And let that fall out of your body. And we'll do this on the other side. And you're going to take your other leg behind you. Find the wall behind you. And take your arms out in front.
and then whew, release that from your body. And we're gonna do standing forward fold here just to let that all fall out of our body. Open up our hamstrings a little bit more, calm our nervous system, calm our brains. Okay, so you're gonna take your feet wide. And then you're going to roll your pelvis over your leg bones and fold forward over your legs. Let your head dangle here. Okay, and then from here, you're going to come slowly back up, and we're gonna come down to seated for our final posture. Okay, for our final posture, we just had to have a, about a 20 minute break, so my body is no longer warm for it. <laughs> but our lighting is good. <laughs> so this posture um, is one that is going to require focus and calmness, and it's going to create that um, uh, energy of digestion for di um, investigation for your mental body. It's a pretty challenging posture, but I want us to just come to it and uh, kind of drop the stories and be where you are in the posture. So we're gonna build it slowly. You're going definitely, unless you're super flexible in your hamstrings, you're gonna need your strap. So just gonna come at it calmly. <laughs> it's a variation of Matsi and Drasana. So I'm just trying to warm up my muscles a bit. <laughs> What we're going to do is you're going to take your legs straight out in front of you. Bend your right leg in. Cross your right leg over your left leg. And then you are going to bend your left leg in. And from here, you're going to come into the twist so that you uh, have your right hand behind you. Here's where you're going to need your strap. So you're going to place the strap around the ball of your right foot and hold on to the strap with your left hand so you're in the twist. Lengthen tall through your spine. <laughs> I know, this is exciting. And we're going to stay grounded and we're going to be detached from outcome. So the next week is non-identification. Well, you know what, we should do this, a lot of the baby will do a lot of these poses again next week as well so that we can stay with this because there's a lot of um, investigation the nice the um, this rotation creates the ground there's a lot of ground uh, this for your mental body for the digestion which creates the investigation but then this piece here where you're going to extend your leg it creates the there's there's needs to be this so it would be like this but my hamstrings are not flexible enough there that works so this is non-identification with how this pose is ultimately going to look non-identification with how the yoga journal model looked <laughs> in this pose but instead a present moment experience of how I feel in this pose. There's a lot of length and rotation and um, it, it feels good in my body. So I'm going to be with my present moment experience of this pose.
and then you're going to release this from your body and we're going to build that on the other side so take your legs straight out in front of you again and you're going to bend your left leg in cross your left leg over your right leg bend your right heel up to your left buttocks Rotate so that your left hand comes behind you so that you're in the twist. And then take your strap so that you're hooking your strap on the ball of your right foot. You're in the twist. You breathe in. Feel your sit bones on the ground. Breathe out. Lengthen out through your left leg. So ultimately, you really want, ultimately that leg would be higher and straight, but I'm going to be with my, with my body in this pose. So I'm getting that rotation through my torso that feels really good and a great stretch through my hamstrings and a lot happening on the outside edge of my leg. And then you can Release that pose from your body. Whew, that feels really good. <laughs> I really like that pose. It's, you know, maybe that's a pose that I can play with in my own personal practice for a while. It feels really good, that rotation through the torso and the hamstrings and everything. Okay, so, yeah, let me know what you think of it in the comments. Let's do a um, Shavasana. Take a... Let's give your hamstrings a little break. Take a bolster and place it. This mat is so sticky. When you want stick on your mat, it's good, but when you're trying to slide around, it's, see, it sticks to everything. <laughs> okay. Brand new, mat. Brand new mat, yeah. Brand new mat problems. Okay, we're gonna take Shavasana. Tuck your shoulder blades under you and turn your palms up beside you. And allow yourself to just sink into Shvasana to the integrate. So feel particularly how calm and relaxed your digestive system is. Also, you know, hamstrings can be really tight. So feel how relaxed and released those are now as well. You might even want to place your hands on your belly. And you can stay resting here. And I'm going to come up to seated and finish out with the readings that I have for you today. My first is just a short quote from Ajahn Mun, and then I have a, a longer uh, reading from Tara Brock on investigation. Okay, so Ajahn Mun says, In your investigation of the world, never allow your mind to desert your body. Examine its nature. See the elements that comprise it. When its true nature is seen fully and lucidly by your heart, the wonders of the world will become clear. And then this reading on investigation by Tara Brock. So Tara Brock also uses the acronym RAIN along with uh, Jack Cornfield. So I thought it would be good for you to hear her take on investigation. 
So Tara Brock says, investigation means calling on your natural interest, the desire to know truth, and directing a more focused attention to your experience. Simply ask, uh, pausing to ask what is happening inside me might igni initiate recognition, but with investigation you can engage in a more active and pointed kind of inquiry. You might ask yourself what most wants my attention. How am I experiencing this in my body? Or what am I believing? Or what does this feeling want from me? You might contact sensations of hollowness or shakiness and then find a sense of unworthiness and shame buried in these feelings. Unless they are brought into consciousness, these beliefs and emotions will control your experience and perpetuate your identification with a limited, deficient self. In order for investigation to be healing and freeing, we need to approach our experience with an intimate quality of attention. We need to offer a gentle welcome to whatever surfaces. This is why Tara Brock uses the phrase, investigate with kindness. So she's actually added on to investigate. Without this heart energy, investigation cannot penetrate. There is not enough safety and openness for real contact. So imagine your child comes home in tears after being bullied at school. In order to find out what happened and how your child is feeling, you have to offer a kind, receptive, gentle attention. Bringing that same kind of kindness to your inner life makes inquiry and ultimately healing possible. Okay, so gradually allow your breath to deepen. Wiggle your fingers and your toes. Bend your knees and roll to your right side. Take a pause there. And just investigate what it is that you're bringing with you as you come back up into the world. And then make your way up to seated and we'll finish our practice with our Lokha Samastha Sukhino Bhavantu Mantra. And this allows us to bring the fruits of our practice inward and then offer them out into the world. So we take the benefits of our practice first for ourselves and then offer them out into the world. So we'll start with a uh, breath and a sigh. Loka samasta suki no bhavantu Loka samasta suki no bhavantu Loka samasta suki no bhavantu May all beings be happy and free, and may the thoughts, words, and actions of my own life contribute in some way to the happiness and freedom for all. So if you like today's show, then please give it a thumbs up or a five-star rating on YouTube and on iTunes. And if you know somebody who would enjoy today's show, then please share it with them. And... Um, what else? I, if you're new to our channel, then you can subscribe to our channel. We put out a new free show every Friday. So if you subscribe on YouTube or iTunes, then you'll get it delivered to you every Friday. And I want to thank Aaliyah, Eva, Peggy, Joshua, and Elizabeth for your donations this week. Especially, I want to thank Elizabeth for all the emojis in her note that she sent me. They were really cute. <laughs> We really appreciate your support immensely. It's because of you and your support, um, whether it be through donations or through your support in our, uh, by being members, that um, we are able to offer these shows freely each week. Because these shows are freely given, but they are not free to produce, it costs us actually quite a bit of money every year to be able to produce these shows, so we appreciate your support in doing that. Um, 
if you uh, would like to support, uh, you can make a donation here or you can support us by leaving your comments below too. So today's question to leave in the comments is what are you bringing kind investigation to? Um, is it uh, your physical sensations, your emotional landscape or your thought pattern? So what part of your physical sensations, your emotional landscape or your thought patterns are you bringing kind investigation to this week? And we went into detail on the teachings of the first three letters of RAIN, recognition, acceptance, and investigation. Uh, we've, so far, we've gone through those three letters, and we have a really beautiful infographic that Baraka did for us. Um, and if you would like to have that as a reminder that you can put on your desk or somewhere um, on your fridge or something, then um, you can go to melissawest.com slash 311 and opt in there and we will send that to you so that you can have that as a reminder to carry these teachings with you. And if you would like more support in bringing this, these teachings on mindfulness into your life, then I would recommend starting a seated meditation practice. Um, we have an introduction to meditation in our membership community. Also, we have 60 guided meditations right now, so far, in our membership community. I know I'm going to be filming three more soon. Um, and also, I just had a meeting with Ilrika and Hannah this week about what we're going to be doing for the weekly challenges for January. And they're going to be a mindfulness-based uh, weekly channel challenges through January. So there's going to be lots of support for you uh, to take these namaste yoga classes deeper through the... Um, through the weekly challenges this week. So if you'd like to become a member, um, then I would, you could click here below. So thank you so much. I'm sending you much love from beautiful British Columbia. May your joy be as deep as our Pacific Ocean. May you be grounded as the trees and our forest. And may you have the strength of our mountains. Om Shanti. Namaste. Melissa would love to hear your questions and thoughts. Please leave your comments below the video. Thank you for your reviews on iTunes and YouTube. Your reviews help us to share yoga and a yoga lifestyle with others around the world. If you have a question for Melissa, you can leave a voice message at melissawest.com and Melissa may answer it in an upcoming blog.